Hi all, Mass Barncup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this Nokia Siemens Networks uh, 3G Flexi System Power Amplifier. It is a 2 times 50 watt output at uh, 2.1 gigahertz. So let's take a closer look at this unit. The Nokia Siemens Networks part uh, number of this is the FRGL Core. Um, this is the um, yeah, the designation for the part you can find in their system configurations. It has uh, the regular DC input plug here, along with yeah, antenna 1 and 2 for the two channels, and then there is a single optical connection. So this is an older unit, since it's also a part of a 3G system, as I wrote down over here. Other than that, it's uh, rather standard for the whole flexi system. Uh, same unit size, probably the same weight, but uh, normally you would see uh, three amplifiers in the 4G versions. So let's get this torn apart. So we expect to find a couple of diplexes underneath these shields. Oh, that came right off. That actually goes all the way through. Did not expect that. But as we see, it is a motorized, so this is with software controlled uh, tuning of the antenna um, antenna matching. Okay, so that actually sits with some cables. That's uh, something I have not seen before. Moved away from that approach. Seems I might be missing a few screws on the fan assembly. Let's just get those out of the way. Let's see what we have here. Oh, that's another one. So off the fan assembly goes. Now that's just the regular 48 volt. Um, Servo fans, DC Brosslers. Takes uh, four wires to uh, run them. Oh, that's actually, both are actually broken. They are completely smashed. So I guess this was at the end of its life. We can see that we have probably two receive channels and a trans transmit channel, as uh, we usually see in these base station amplifiers. So uh, I guess I can just unplug these and take the whole diplexer module off. Pretty good fit. Ah, they were easier. But that's some nice uh, coaxial uh, connectors. Really uh, sturdy stuff made for being mounted outside. Okay, that's actually comes right off. Very interesting design because this is the first time I see this. Always fun to look at these amplifiers because every time there is a complete new design despite that the yeah, uh, whole uh, system, the flexi core system is probably identical to what you could order maybe one or two years prior but you get a whole other product. The amount of Research and development in this system is just insane. I'm really looking forward to take this apart and see what we find. It will be interesting to see how easy the, this comes apart. Just wondering, okay, that's plugs as well. So we can start by putting those off. Always reusable. Now the, all the screws sit with a little gasket on them for water tightening, waterproofing. So I'm wondering how much it will take to pry this open now. Okay, that were not so bad. Just has a single PCB that stuck here. So we can see all the heat sinking pads for all the ICs sit here at the top. 
and we can spot all the different ICs sitting all around here. Now this is a uh, receive uh, filter, or yeah, filtering and analog to digital conversion connects through this uh, multi-pin connector down to the main control. Very nice layout. Will be easy to uh, show the signal path on these because it is a general simple layout for a 3G amplifier. And we have the two nice power amplifiers sitting here. And what is really lovely about these is that they only have a with maybe 10, 12 pins and then two RF uh, connections. So that might be pretty simple to reverse engineer for somebody interested in RF. So let's take a look at the diplexer. I know I said the diplexer next, but I discovered on the underside there was another panel. Um, so let's just take a look. Ah, it's empty. There it is, the power supply. Nice big input plug shielded actually has electrolytic capacitors in it that's uh, old school can types now that's not every day you see that and the uh, winding of the secondary and primary cores of these planet transformers is all, also a little bit iffy but overall uh, clamped down uh, smd mosfets and diodes quite interesting design Again, a lot of uh, design choices that I never saw before in a base station amplifier. Oh, this is so exciting! It always is taking the lid off these. Ah, and it's stuck somewhere. Come on, and there we go. Screws everywhere. Now that is, I would not say disappointing, but once you have seen so many uh, very nicely polished silver plated and lots of details, this could yeah, be just a little plain maybe. But also, what I noticed first is that there are hardly any couplings. There may, may be a few uh, that are as a part of the whole uh, cavity uh, design here and the resonators as well um, so this is not a very modular design and probably also shows as being an older design that for the 3d technology that so uh, streamlined the design was not even necessary in order to have the performance you needed so let's see if these are identical units certainly would seem so from just looking at the lids wow they really like to get stuck again. And they are identical, so not mirrored or something like that. But that actually goes all the way through what we can also see on the power amplifiers, that it it is basically basically two designs that are put in and have some common control logics. See the software tunable motor here. And the software tunable filter. I'm gonna unplug it. So what the, the filter does is it actually moves these um, plates back and forth forward in the filter. That could also explain why there is uh, fewer couplings as this is the coupling itself or can act as coupling as well besides just being used for tuning the cavity. They use uh, the regular NMB MAD uh, motors which are small uh, servo motors that has a small linear wandering. Now the back side of this, that's quite interesting because I thought I saw all the ADCs on the uh, board in the middle here, but apparently there is some sort of, uh, maybe this actually is the first filters. Let's see. The output from the two receiving channels, we have that here, 
goes down through to the other side of the board. We have the input from the two antenna connectors here, and we have the transmit channel sitting here in the middle. So if we take a look, here we have the transmit channel. The two receive channels go into each their amplifiers, output amplifiers or filter logics. And there's also some smaller measurements. Oh, that's actually a power supply. So power supply and perhaps transient uh, protection. Uh, all the noisy magnetics have been put into underneath a small Faraday cage in order to minimize the amount of uh, noise being spread out, of, out through the amplifier. There's a freescale cold fire FPGA sitting there. Let's see if we can find underneath here. Okay, so on this side we have all the hybrid couplers that simply combines the, the uh, out of fa phase signals again. Looking forward to take this for a circuit analysis in a second video. I hope you enjoyed this teardown of this 2x50 watt base station amplifier. Now these two power amplifiers, they are going to a guy called Dustier on highvoltageforum.net and I have put a link in the description of this video so you can follow a few of his other reverse engineering of power amplifiers from other teardowns I have done. He is doing some quite skilled work and actually makes these work again outside of their natural habitat that would be inside these mobile base station, mobile phone, cellular systems. So he is repurposing these uh, to be used for amateur radio use and I think that is great. So please do check out the threads and all the information that he also share about these units. So until next time, see ya.